Good morning, folks, and welcome back to the farm. Um, as you can see, it's the first week of April. We've had some pretty drastic changes at the farm. Um, over the last couple of episodes, I've been talking about wanting to get a sheep pen and trying to figure out how to do it all. Uh, I spent about two hours this morning totally transforming the farm. Um, first things first, our old cedar, I discovered we had a problem with the old cedar. It would not hook up to our tractor. We could not, well, I got it hooked up to the tractor, but then it wouldn't function and I couldn't get it off the tractor. So I had to sell it, uh, to get it to remove from the tractor. It was so messed up. So we sold that one off. We picked up a different one of relatively equal value and size. So we just changed it out straight across so it didn't affect our money. We just, we had to get something that was going to work because today's episode is all about getting crop in the ground. Uh, the other drastic change we made was our big pig sty that we had that came with its pasture. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't just delete the pasture. As I showed in the last episode, it had to delete not only the pasture, but the pig barn itself plus the storage shed attached to it. So, um, I just said, what the hell? And I did it. And I, so I sold off all of our pigs. I sold off the pig pen and got rid of all that stuff and took the money and made a boatload of changes. So, uh, we should have actually had even more money left, but I took us back down to our original money because we would have had a little bit more money than I wanted. Uh, so here is our changes. Ta-da! We have this nice new storage shed here with all of our baling and grass working equipment, minus the baler. I, I kept the baler separate, but we've got our... Our two mowers, our tether, our wind drawer, and our bale trailer stuck in here. We've got this shed where we've parked our harvester with our little header trailer. We've got our roller sitting here and our fertilizer and lime spreader. We have our fancy dancy smaller pig pen over here. Uh, the one downside to this pig pen is it doesn't do manure, but it's okay. We weren't really doing anything with the manure anyways. So our values are back kind of close to what they were about two months ago. So uh, we had about 8,000 liters of slurry and that's down to 3,400. Uh, our food is only at 7,000 or 700 liters and we were at about 4,000 liters. So we're, we're missing a little bit of food, but that's okay. Uh, here is the sheep enclosure that we picked up. We don't have any sheep yet, but we will get some as soon as feasibly possible. And we took our lime, our leftover lime that we had, and we've converted this little enclosure to be a holder so we can put like our lime, our fertilizer, our herbicide, our seeds. We'll put all that stuff in here rather than put equipment in because it was hard to get in and out of here with this tiny little area here. So. But anyways, that's where we sit. Um, one other thing that I've done, and I'm hoping this is going to work, the field up here that we rolled to try and get the stones out of and the stones weren't coming out and nothing was working, uh, I already tried to record a video today and do the seeding and the field would not take seed. It wouldn't do anything. So I did a reset on the field. I've got it down to just being a base plowed field um, in the hopes that when we bring our cedar over here, it's going to start planting. Um, no guarantees, but fingers crossed. So what I'm going to do is we'll, we'll hook up to our cedar, we'll bring it over, and we'll try. And if it works, we're going to seed the field and, uh, and go from there. If it doesn't work, then we're going to have to maybe do a jump and we'll figure out what the hell is going on and try and get that field sorted out. So you'll have to bear with me as we try and get this going here. 
Um, I, I've never seen so many problems with just trying to get a field to do what a field's supposed to do in this game. I've never had a problem with stones not coming out. I've never had a problem with seed not going in. So something really bizarre is going on with this field. So hopefully with the reset of the field, it will fix whatever issue there is and we can uh, we can get to work in this field and get some crop going on. Uh, we do also have to cut our grass and get some silage going because we're going to run out of money really soon because we got to buy some pig food. Um, so we really need to get a lot of work done. I was supposed to do the silage in March, but I completely forgot that was our plan. And um, I dove straight into rushing to, to April so that we could get seed in the ground. Oh, it looks like seed is coming out. Let's take a quick check. Oh, beautiful. We're getting seed coming out of the cedar. So uh, we're already one step up over the issues we were having before. So happy, happy, joy, joy. Uh, we're going to get this field seeded. And then we'll have to check on the fertilizer and lime and see if it needs any of either and if it does we'll get that done as well and then uh, we'll take a look at what the time is looking like for the day and if we have enough time we will also jump into the um, mowing and bailing of some silage so we'll just kind of play it by ear and see what happens but let's get outside for you all and let's do a nice time lapse and get this field seated. essentially run out of seed. We're down to just six liters left. I was hoping we were going to get that entire field done without needing to run to the store for another bag of seed. But unfortunately, it did not work out that way. So, um, nice thing is, is that uh, we were able to at least get the tractor all fueled up after popping out and grabbing that jerry can. So, I really wish that that jerry can, once you buy it, it would stay in your inventory like a chainsaw. And so when you fill up your tractor, you just have an empty jerry can that you can run over to your fuel tank or run to the gas station, fill it up, and just keep a full jerry can with you all the time. But 
as soon as you use it, it disappears from your inventory and you have to run all the way to the store to get another one. Just a little bit of a pain in the butt. I'm almost thinking next time um, that I take the pickup truck out and we're by the store, uh, I think I'm going to maybe buy two or three jerry cans and just bring them back to the farm and have them there for when we do run out of fuel. As we do it quite often, I don't pay attention to my fuel gauge and I do have the, uh, the fuel usage set quite high. So, um, it is what it is. So, for the sake of argument here, we're going to have to have someone from the store come out with their little loader and uh, get our seed in the in the thing here. So we'll, we'll, we'll just have to do a little role play that they're coming out and they're hoisting it up for us because we don't have a loader here to do it in the realistic way that we like to do. So we'll, uh, we'll have them come out, fill up the cedar and then off we'll go. Um, one other thing I was thinking of while we're sitting here is due to the absolute mess that I made of getting the tomatoes into the truck in the last video, uh, I was thinking about just picking up a tiny little trailer that we can use. Oh, that's 9,000 bucks. I saw that there was one over here, 3,500. Picking up a little trailer like this that makes it a hell of a lot easier than loading the pickup for putting the tomatoes in for sale. So I think that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy this right now and we will come back with the truck. We'll pick it up and we'll also get, um, we'll also get some jerry cans and throw it in the back and we'll see if they can throw our bag of seed in the back here too when we come back to pick it up and we'll take that home on our next trip and we'll just leave it up by the greenhouse so that we can load our tomatoes up it's just trying to fit them in the back of the truck i'm trying to stack the tomatoes like perfectly and uh and get them in the back of the truck and it it's just so difficult um especially from first person view because like i said i think that the problem is when you're sitting in a piece of equipment like this and you've got forks on the front, you can see the forks when you're sitting. Unless, of course, you're super short. But, I mean, I'm almost seven feet tall, so when I'm in equipment and I'm looking over the hood, I'm seeing the forks, so I can see the tip of the forks. I can set them where I want them to get into a pallet and do what I need to do. Um, but in here, just the field of view is so off for me that I just, oh, I struggle so much with getting the, the pallets on the forks and then not being able to get the spatial relation, like is the pallet high enough to put it on the one that's already on the ground when I'm stacking? Is it not? Is it like, it's just, it's all out of whack for me. So um, I'm thinking if we get that nice big, big trailer that we just picked up, it'll make things a hell of a lot easier because I'm not fighting to try and worry about stacking the pallets so nicely to get in between the wheel wells on the pickup truck when I'm putting them in there. So uh, it'll really help out a lot and should make it that I can sort out getting pallets loaded up in a much quicker fashion and not have to jump cut it all the time because it takes me four hours of gameplay to stack six pallets inside a pickup truck. <laughs> so Hopefully that will help us out and make things a lot more efficient and uh, and we can go from there. But we're back in the field now. We'll finish off these last little bits without going back into a time lapse. And uh, we will get this field done. So we should be wide enough. We're not leaving a strip behind us here. Hopefully. We'll stop and get the dust to settle. We're not leaving any, no mohawks, this is good. I haven't used this cedar from inside the cab for any more than the first five or six feet before we jump to a time lapse. So uh, just wanted to make sure we're not leaving anything behind, as I'm sure you saw even when I was on the outside, just because I had the camera offset just a little bit, give you guys a little bit of a better view. 
uh, it made me miss quite a lot and I had to go back and go over stuff but uh, it's all good it's all good we're almost done here so um, one thing I didn't look at was just looking so the pH value is not bad the nitrogen it says is perfect so uh, I think that's because when we took the crop off of here last time we cultivated it down and I think it got the fertilizer from the cultivation uh, put it back into the soil and so that's good, knowing that we don't have to fertilize in here, save ourselves one step, we can jump into uh, just spreading some lime and get the field ready to rock and roll. That will hopefully, hopefully be able to be done before the end of this video because uh, this took a long, long time. And I've kind of decided I don't want to work in the night anymore if I don't have to. That being said, we could also just jump ahead to the next day and we could carry on with our uh, with our grass cutting and our baling. I guess we'll just have to see how long the video is looking, but I know we've already been going for almost an hour and a half of real time getting this done for you. Of course, the time lapse is going to cut that down a whole bunch, but... Um, it is what it is. We'll just, if, if we end the video after getting the lime done, we do. If we don't, then we do a little bit of bailing in the second week of April. We'll just kind of play it by ear and see how things look. But the nice thing is, I figure uh, two more passes after this one, and we should be good to go, as long as we're not missing any, uh, any little mohawks here. But yeah, I have to say I'm really, really happy that we decided to do the old, uh, the old switcheroo with the, with the pigsty that we had. It was really nice. I liked that pigsty because it had, you know, it had the slurry, it had the manure, it had everything all kind of built into one, and it was, uh, it was doing quite well. And it had that attached shed, which was nice. So. Everything about it was really, really good, but uh, I do like having the ability to uh, to grab some sheep in the future because it's just going to be something else that's brand new that I have never done before. So it'll be exciting. It'll be a learning experience for me. Oh, and look what I did. I lifted it just a hair early. Um, and it'll open up productions of wool for us at a minimum. Uh, I don't think that the sheep barn that I grabbed has a milk output. I think it only has um, the wool. So, but it is what it is. Uh, just having the sheep there, because I've never done it before, is gonna be new. It's gonna be a learning experience. It's gonna be something fun to try. So I'm super excited for it, regardless of what it all ends up entailing. Uh, I did not look to see what sheep eat. I assumption that sheep would be eating very, very similar food things, like they'll be eating grains and whatever else. If it's root vegetables, it could be in trouble because we don't have any fields that do root vegetables, but. I imagine that the pigs are the only ones that do root vegetables in uh, in this world. So, but I guess we'll uh, we'll find out when the time comes. I think I just saw some mohawks sitting over there, some little splotchy mohawks that were just to our right. We have to get this little piece here. And I just want to make sure. Yeah, see all this little. I don't know if that's just little tiny splotches of ground that did not get seed. We'll find out because I'm going to go over it just to make sure. No, we didn't lose any seed, so I think we're good. All right. Yield done. Thank good. Um, while we're driving past this sheep enclosure, let's just take a quick look and see 
if it makes mention of uh, milk. No, not seeing. But it could be that because we don't have any animals there, it's not saying anything about milk. I'm not sure. Because I did notice over here that it's... Oh no, this isn't the one with the, with the tank in it. I say I thought this was the one that had the tank in here that was like milk storage, but it is not. Oh, I just locked myself in. And I still have my cedar going. Let me turn that off. But, uh, yeah, I think it'll be, it'll be very, very cool to uh, try out the sheep and see what happens with them. So I'm super excited for that. Let's get this cedar put away where it needs to go. Doesn't need it all the way back at the back, but I want to have it kind of straight up here when we're ready to hook up to it again. Plus I need to be able to interface with it here to get the PTO and the hydraulics and stuff all unhooked. Oh, I guess it needs to be down on the ground and detach it while it's floating in midair. There we go. Alright, we're definitely not going to have enough lime to do that whole field. We're probably going to have to buy a boatload of lime. So I think what we'll do is I'm going to do a little uh, a little jump cut and we're going to take the truck over to the store. We're going to buy a few bags of lime and get them brought back over here as, as well as our uh, bag of seed that's there and the um, jerry cans that we're going to pick up. So we'll, we'll jump cut, we'll go get all that stuff, and we will be right back when we're ready to rock and roll. Alright, welcome back folks. Um, so, <laughs> oh, this is becoming just par for the goddamn course. You know it's a geezer video when absolutely everything goes to shit, nothing works right, and we have to scramble to make sense of it all. Um, the trailer that we picked up would not attach to our pickup truck with a trailer hitch on it. Pickup truck could not get a different style of connection. A trailer hitch or nothing. So... Uh, I sold the pickup truck and thought I'll buy a different model of a pickup truck. So I went through all of them, tried to find something that would take, a, take this trailer and connect to it. Nothing would. So, we don't have a pickup truck anymore. Ta-da! We got ourselves this little John Deere unit here that happens to pick up to this trailer and works like a charm. So, that's what we've done. Uh, the other flaw that I found is I didn't know that this trailer, when you try and put a bag in it, it actually empties the bag in it. You cannot haul bags in this trailer. So, I sold off the truck to get this to haul the trailer that I thought could haul my bags of seed and fertilizer and lime and crap. You can't. So this thing is good for only tomatoes, so this is my new tomato hauling setup, because it can't do anything else. The nice thing about that is, is that we've got a boatload of tomatoes to sell. Woohoo! So we're, we're in good shape there, but it was a super huge expenditure just to haul tomatoes to the store. Kind of goofy. Um, we do have all of our lime put away in the shed over there and the leftover of our bag of seed put there, so we're, we're in good shape there. Um, a little bit of seed that, when I tried to get the seed bag put in here, that's when I discovered that uh, seed empties into there, so there's a pile of seed sitting over in front of the cedar there. I just dumped it to the ground. We're going to scoop it up with the, uh, with the front end loader and get rid of it when the time comes. We're just gonna dump it off into the lake or into somewhere just to get rid of it because it's seed that we can't do anything with now. So 
uh, we're gonna send it away. I guess if I pick it up at the bucket, I could try and pour it into the cedar, but I don't know if it's gonna go. But we'll try. But for now, let's get to liming. So I'm gonna bring this to an outside view here, and we're gonna jump into a time lapse and lime this field. about 5 29 p.m. on this fine fine April day um, the Sun will be up for a few more hours but we're sitting at a little over two hours of record time here so <laughs> I think that what we'll do is we'll definitely bring an end to the episode for today and uh, when we come back in the next episode, we will go on to doing our grass cutting and um, baling and making some silage. Because we need a ton of silage so we can make some money. Because we're starting to run out and I would really love to buy sheep in the next episode. So we'll definitely make sure that... Uh, that we get the silage done and we can hopefully get some sheep ASAP. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode and I really hope that you enjoyed the transformation that I've done here uh, to get us back our pigs but also make it so we could do some sheep at the same time, have a little fun with a few different things and uh, go from there. So hopefully you all enjoyed and hopefully we'll see you out on the next one. Take care everybody.